there. I'm Rachel T. Meyer. I am Polly Connor. And we are Team Thriving Home, and we are so excited that you're cooking along with us today. Yep, today we are making prep session number five. So if you are here, you know that you are here for session five. Yep. Now, as you probably noticed, we're doing something a little different with prep session number five. It is made with one main ingredient. Get ready! A whole lot of chicken breasts. <laughs> 22, in fact. Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we're working with a lot of chicken today, so we're excited. <laughs> yeah, here's what you're going to be making. And by the way, this is a super efficient way to work in the kitchen. We're going to make our Asian sesame chicken. So with just a few easy, key Asian-inspired ingredients, you're going to totally transform these chicken breasts into something that you can use in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also making one of our family favorites, our gourmet chicken sandwiches. And this marinade for this is just so good. It's, you can We like it on the grill mostly, but you can throw it in the oven. We give you all those options in the prep session. Yep, and our last recipe has been on our blog a really long time. It's called <laughs> Southwest Chicken and Bacon Wraps. And let me tell you, these things are on point. It was actually developed from a recipe that Polly and I really enjoy from a local restaurant here and we turned it into our own recipe. So it's kind of a copycat recipe, but you're gonna love it. Like kids love the bacon, chicken and bacon wrap. It's a great one. So anyway, let's get started on your prep session. One of the things that will make this one hour freezer prep session go really well for you and be very efficient is to lay out all of your ingredients ahead of time and lay out all your equipment. And in fact, we've gone so far as I already showed you to open all the packages mm -hmm. of meat and that kind of stuff. So, speaking of opening packages of meat, <laughs> we're going to move to step one in your prep session. So, make sure you have this out and ready. And the first step is really just to preheat the oven. We like to cook bacon in the oven. It's faster. It's less messy. Um, so, I'm going to hop over here. I'm going to preheat this to 400. And while that's warming up, I'm going to, you can see I already lined these baking sheets. Just because I didn't want you to hear all the foil on the yeah, camera. <laughs> it's pretty loud. So, um... Preheated. It happens really fast. I'm kidding. We warmed it up earlier. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread this bacon out on these foil lined baking sheets. And we line them with foil because it just makes the cleanup a lot easier. Much easier. So you still get a lot of grease in the pan, but it's just you don't have to scrape the pan. So I'm just going to do one piece at a time here. And then, Rachel, you want to tell them a little trick you're just telling yeah. you? Yeah. So you can cook your bacon however you want. We're just right. showing you what we think is the fastest way for this prep session and it's really is reduces the mess it, it the mess is contained to these sheets um so one of the things is you you don't want these pieces of bacon to overlap because that'll make them perfectly flat and they cook up really nicely however what you may run into is your sheet pan's not big enough for all the bacon you have so what polly's doing here she's twisting them just a little bit i saw this tip somebody on instagram did it and i was like that's genius um, you don't have to twist it too much, but just by twisting your piece of bacon a little bit, it makes more room just on the pan. Room. Yeah. And I've tried it. It's genius. It works okay. It, it does. Yeah. It works. It works nicely. Yep. So anyway, we're going to finish up lining up all these bacon pieces and finish up step one and then we'll move to step two. Yeah. We'll wash up. We'll meet you back here. We are on step two, but before we hop to that, I just wanted to let you know a little thing. I put these in the oven, um, and since there's two trays, I found the bottom one cooks a lot faster. Maybe it's just my oven. I don't know if it happens everywhere. Um, so I'm going to switch mine halfway through. So I just set it for 10 minutes. You'll see the timer here in the background. If you hear it, just ignore it. Uh, I'm going to switch them halfway through. Yep. So on step two, what you're really going to do is you're going to prep your freezer bags. And this is an important part for this to go quickly is um, what you, what we have here, we talk about it in all, all of our videos, are these little baggie holders you can get on Amazon. We'll link to them for you. If you don't have baggie holders, we're gonna show you this other tip we talk about, is you can just get bowls that kind of look like this. You want deeper bowls. And so, um, here, give me a few and I'll start setting them up. Yeah, I've already put my freezer labels on several of the bags, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this last one, okay? So we just use packing tape. You can use whatever tape you have on hand. Oh, there it is. Um, the sesame ones. You know, there. you could use masking tape. There's even something called freezer tape, I think. I'm not sure if it's any better. You should tell us in comments. Yeah, I've if never you think used it before. I read some reviews of it, and it was like, this is, this is yeah, the condensation can make the, the labels fall off if they get, if it thaws and freezes right. too many times. But the big thing is you want to tape it on before your food's in there, and you want right. to tape it on for sure before it freezes. Right. So I've taped on this label, but on some of these, um, I've already written, like for instance, on this, I've already written my date when we're creating this. 
and side dish and serving ideas, which you'll find on page, I think like two or three of our packet. We give you tons of side dish ideas, tons of ideas for how to serve it. Mm -hmm. Write those on your bag before you put the food in. It's really, really helpful. That was a tip from one of our testing team members. Yep. We were glad they brought that up. So like, yeah. it's hard to write that on at the end. We're like, yeah, oh, so smart. Write it on before you put it on. So, so yeah. we're setting up our bags. We're getting them nice and wide and open. I'm gonna put the Asian sesame chicken ones in here because what we're gonna do in the next step is we're going to divide up all that chicken into <laughs> our bags and then start creating our marinades so this is actually a really easy prep session not mm. there's like other than cooking the bacon you're not cooking much you're not chopping much you're really creating some marinades so once that's all set up we're gonna move on to step three we are on step three prep the massive amount of chicken breasts <laughs> Never seen so many in your life. Yes. Okay, so the first recipe I'm gonna prep is the gourmet chicken sandwiches. Now for those, you have to do one special thing. So you could pound out your chicken to make it thinner for mm -hmm. to make like a sandwich, but that's a lot of work and, and that gets gross. gross. Funny yeah. story, when I didn't know how to cook and I followed a recipe that said pound it out, I didn't know you were supposed to like saran wrap over it. Uh -huh. And literally I got one of those mallets and was pounding it in chicken Chicken's pieces. Like yes, my husband and I still talk about it because we had chicken particles all over. I'm like, oh. this can't be right. Just like deadly so. bacteria flying in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We had a salmonella kitchen probably yes. for like a year. Okay, what I'm gonna do though to make this chicken breast thin enough to be a sandwich is we're gonna cut it in half lengthwise. So one easy way to do this is get a really sharp knife I'm gonna put my palm on top of the chicken. Your hands are gonna get all chickeny, just embrace it. And I'm gonna cut in half this way. So that way you can make sure you kind of try to get an even cut. It may not be perfect, but it'll and be And you're kind of using a sawing motion mm -hmm. to gently move through that. Yep, perfect so. cutlets. Woohoo! So she's gonna put, Thanks. she's gonna work on okay. three chicken breasts um, per bag. So six total So you'll get like breasts. six sandwiches in each of these bags yes. is what it's gonna turn out to be. So you're gonna use six, six of these chicken breasts and slice mm -hmm. those in half lengthwise. Yep. And again, your knife is gonna get covered in chicken stuff. Like your hands are, you just gotta go for it. So yep. just make sure you wash your hands every time yeah. you change okay, That's gears. the last one in this okay. one. Thank you. Okay, for one more bag teacher. here. These are big boys too. Big boys. A lot of times, it's hard like when you order, big I order girls. Big girls. <laughs> <laughs> Saw what I did there. <laughs> So this is the roll of the dice of ordering groceries online as you don't see exactly what you're working with. <laughs> so we've had some funny moments um, yeah. shooting these. Like maybe you've done our pork tenderloin one. I don't remember which <laughs> session that was, but we ordered groceries online and we got these like they were so small. They were little guys. Little guys. Little guys. Baby we're like, tenderloins. Who, who chose that? That is not gonna feed a family. Yeah, seriously. We're like, this is two people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay there's almost that. there. One more. Last the, one. So one of the things Polly and I were just talking about before we turn this on was what's the beauty of doing a prep session where you're using all the same main ingredient is you wait for chicken breasts to go on sale. And they do, they go on sale pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. Just keep an eye out for that. Yep. And then stock up on them. Okay, okay. so now you're gonna need to do four whole chicken breasts in each of the remaining bags here. All right. And that will finish up. Since my hands are the dirty ones, I'm just going for it. I can make you do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> two. I mean, this is a lot of chicken. This it's is a lot of chicken. A lot of people. So one of the questions we get is, okay, let's say you buy a bunch of chicken breasts on sale. Sorry, you're counting. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to them. Good talk. And, um, but can you, but you're not ready to use it. Can you freeze it, then thaw it, mm -hmm. then make freezer meals and refreeze those? Can I switch you size, Rach? Yep. Whoop. And um, the answer is absolutely, you can. It, we have found that it does not affect the texture or the taste to do that as long as you, you know, when you thaw it, you quickly make your freezer meals and throw them back in the freezer. So that should be no problem at all. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you're done touching all that chicken and washing your hands, Almost you done. can pause at that point. <laughs> okay, hopefully, can you move some of the stuff so they can see these bowls, how the yes. bowls are? Yeah, maybe you can just show them. So if you don't have these handy freezer bag holders, this the bowl just supports it. It, it just really holds helps. It up. Yeah, it really does. It works. So that's yep. going okay. to be like, We're going to, Polly's going to wash up, and I'll up. show you. We're going to clean the counter, too, because as you can see, this thing. just gets a lot of drippies. Yep. That's an official word, by the way. Drippies. Drippies. Okay, we'll see you back here for step four after you have scoured. Hi, hi, Rach. Yeah, <laughs> nice try. All right, we're on step four. We're going to make the marinade for our Asian 
chicken or Asian sesame chicken. So it's super easy. We're gonna build the marinade in our bags. Now, if you don't wanna do that for some reason, you could do this, totally do this in like a glass mixing bowl mm -hmm. and then pour it in there. But we like to do it in the bag and then just like close the bag and squish it all around. So that's what we're gonna do for all of these to I mean, save dish. Less yeah. dishes, hello. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Polly, what do we need? Okay, here? I'm gonna read these off just to make it easier here it's while we're on video. Good. We know you don't have the luxury of someone reading this to you. So well, you need to pause. Read it to you. That's true. Okay, so a third cup of avocado oil in each bag. So every time I say this, it's going into each bag, not just one. And if you don't have avocado oil, you could use any other neutral cooking oil. We yeah. just happen to really like avocado oil. You hear us talk about that a lot. Olive oil is usually kind of our next option. Yeah, yeah, yeah not an than... extra virgin for this one, but an olive oil would work. Yep, yep. Okay, one third cup of unseasoned rice vinegar. So mm. that one there. So we found that un they're seasoned and unseasoned. If you get seasoned, you're gonna add a lot of sodium to this recipe. Um, so we go with unseasoned, but um, if you like really salty things like Polly. I do like salty things. She likes salty, we've learned this. <laughs> Every time when we were recipe testing for our cookbooks, I was like, it needs more salt. Yeah. Everything needed more salt. Okay, so this is a fourth cup of soy sauce. Yep. And this is actually gluten-free soy sauce. Um, obviously you can use whatever your family yep. likes. This is called Tamari gluten-free soy sauce. You could use coconut aminos if you're mm -hmm. also gluten-free. Yep. All right, three tablespoons of honey per bag. This brings that kind of sweetness that okay. makes the Asian flavor. Yep. And we've shown this tip before. You have your tablespoon, use a little cooking spray, spray that, and your honey, you guys, hang oh. on. <laughs> There's a big thing of pepper right here. here. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, at least you sneeze that way. I did. Under our chicken. Well, that's what we teach our kids. Sneeze away from the family. We always say cough corner, like your cough corner of your elbow. Like, yeah, well, we always say that too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I just didn't have a chance to get my elbow up. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, wait, you said three, right? Yes. Three tablespoons of honey. Of bag. each one. Yes. Okay. So it sneeze again. People are thinking. I know, COVID. right? <laughs> no, there's a giant thing of pepper right here. And even as I opened it, it's wide open. And I was like, I'm going to sneeze. Like, this oh, is right here. That's awesome. <laughs> Yep. You didn't hear it earlier, but my dog was like hacking in the other room during a recording. Or... Yeah, if you hear weird noises, it's probably her and dogs. I do have two dogs around here. And there was a neighbor dog barking too earlier, but we'll see. Only the keen ear will pick that up. That's right. <laughs> Did you get all three there? Okay. We have the honey. Okay, one That's teaspoon nice. of sesame oil. Now, this is a powerful flavor. It is. You yeah. don't need a ton, we found. Right. One teaspoon should do it. Mm -hmm. If you smell it, it smells really good, but it's just... You know, they squeeze the oil out of sesame seeds. Yeah, it's a great flavor, but just don't overdo it. Speaking of smelling good, that bacon behind us cooking mm. is smelling really good right yep. now. My stomach's crowded. And a fourth teaspoon of black pepper. Yep. Oop. And I'm going to close that up because I'm seriously going <laughs> to All, All right, right. so that should do it. But here's what, here's the idea, okay? Squeeze out as much air as you can. I know that the label's a little bit in the way, but it's not that big a deal. Okay, so then you really got to get in here and work. This is like working out your frustration. Yeah, Lazy. It. Shake it. Yeah. So the nice thing about this recipe too, there's so many different ways to cook it, and we include mm -hmm. all of that in your packet, so you can well, grill it, slow it's cook on, it. It's right here. It's on the, on there you the go. label. There you go. Cook it in the oven, slow yep. cooker, instant pot, or grill. So we know um, our recipe testers love versatility, and so we really try to provide yeah. lots of options. And the other thing to know as you're finishing this up is there's lots of ways to serve this. Mm -hmm. So again, go back to that guide of different ways to serve it, but. We were just talking about how we would probably serve this over our fried rice. We have a great mm -hmm. fried rice recipe on driving home. You could also make this a meal kit. Like just mm -hmm. go to the freezer section and buy that frozen brown rice that's already pre-cooked and those stir fry veggies. Freeze it along with this and boom, you pull out all of it. You've got a meal ready to go. Yep. All right, guys. You just made two dinners. Good job. Okay. We're going to come back here for, I think we're on step five. After you're done with step four, go ahead and freeze your Asian sesame chicken and we'll get started on step five. All right, and right before Rachel started talking, the timer went off in the oven. So I'm just gonna grab this out of the oven. Now, one tip, I always, I'm like scarred by something I saw on Instagram once. Someone got, well, Jamie Ivy, she's a friend of ours, we've been on our podcast. Um, so she had like bubbled blisters because oh. the bacon grease had like come when she's taking bacon out of the she oven. Like, must have pulled it out really I know. fast. So or something. I always like do the big old mitt because I'm like, never well, want to happen. You might even want to use two mitts and just really get a good grip on that. Be really careful, make sure small kids are not around. Yeah, there's a lot of grease. All that kind of stuff. There we go, we're gonna let those cool off. Those look great. And 
and we're moving on to step five. Back right. to our gourmet chicken sandwiches. These yes. are the ones that I sliced in half earlier. Now Rachel is going to yell out to me the marinade just yep. so I can focus on getting them in there correctly. You're going to get a lot of use out of your tablespoon. Yes. So she's going to start with six tablespoons of olive oil per bag or you can use that avocado oil too. It doesn't really matter. Olive oil to me has a little different taste. It adds a little more taste to it. And but as you can see, I'm being a little bit sloppy with it just because it's a marinade. I mean, yeah, it's exactly. like not like a baking where it's like you right. have to get it pretty exact. Yeah. So. And if you are somebody who's like, I don't want to do six tablespoons, just know that four tablespoons is a fourth cup. You can yep. do a fourth cup, fourth cup, and then two or, you know, on a half of that fourth yes. cup. Make okay. it go easier. Get the, okay, next up, girl, is three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Okay. This is a big old bottle. <laughs> I think we got sent that in the mail. Yes, One of the did. fun things about being a blogger is we have brands uh, send us stuff from Same. time to time. Three. Three. Okay, just make sure I don't miss it. Okay. Send us stuff from time to time yeah. to try. We got a hilarious package of a ton, a ton of apple about cider, cider vinegar. We should give them a shout out. They were so nice. They were. To give us that. I tried drinking it because, you know, there's... Oh, no, that's not the one they sent us. That was... Oh, you're right. Aldi. That's the Aldi Here version. we are talking about I think about it's called White House. White House apple cider. You tried drinking it? Well, because they have them, like, in the little drink things. Oh. I, is it supposed to be really what? healthy for you? Yeah. How'd it go? I couldn't do it. No, I tried. I tried. Okay. okay. One tablespoon of garlic powder. Mm. So you may... It seems like a lot, but we do mean tablespoon. We are right. not. We are oh. not mistaken, my friends. We've okay. tested this recipe a million times. Oh yeah, times. I've made this. It time. is awesome. It's, it's a good so one. So good. Yep. Okay, two teaspoons of salt on it. So yeah, <laughs> that's another thing that makes this one, really good. Two. Is all the salt. there's just a ton of seasonings in it. Like I feel like yeah. a lot of other marinades don't have as much as this, but that's what makes it so good. Okay, so now you're one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. Hey, take a big whiff of that. <laughs> All right. One and a half teaspoons. So this is actually one and a half teaspoon little spoon. So I don't I have to do that. I didn't know I that know. Wow. That's cool. I have fancy things. One and a half teaspoons of ground ginger. This is an interesting uh -oh. pantry item. Um, this recipe years ago when I developed it, I was look. you know, when we develop recipes, we look at lots of different recipes. We get ideas. We see what people like. And um, I'm having a hard time with the ginger here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Kind of sticks. Um, Here we go. But I thought that's a really interesting ingredient, and so we tried it, and we were like, "Boom, it works." Yep. Um, the last one is one and a half teaspoons of paprika, and what I like about this one is it will add some flavor. It's more of a smoky flavor. It's not hot paprika, mm -hmm. and um, it adds some pretty color to it. So yeah. again. Here we go. Just the marinade, guys. Just the marinade. So squeeze out the air, because air is the enemy of good freezer food. Yep. I've heard us say it a million times. And we're going to just give it our a little shake, shake, squish. And as we said in the previous step, if you want to make that marinade in a smaller bowl and just stir it up and then pour it in there, some people prefer it that way. So feel free to do that. But this if is you just... like extra dishes, I mean, go for it. Like, <laughs> if you like to make things harder for yourself, right? I mean, it's yeah. up to you. So <laughs> you're so sad. <laughs> okay, we're going to set these aside for now. Mm -hmm. We're not putting these in the freezer quite yep. yet because they go with a kit. And we're going to put that kit together Coming after back. we're done with all the chicken assembly. So yep. stay tuned. We are moving on to step six. So before we do that real quick, you might want to be rinsing out, not might want to be, you should be rinsing out your measuring cups and spoons just because they're going into a lot of different seasonings. So what you're not seeing is in between these steps, we're rinsing them out. So you yeah, you don't have to like soap them up because right. they don't have raw meat on them or something. Now, Rachel is assembling our Southwest chicken and bacon wrap marinade. So again, same story, third verse. We're making the marinades here. <laughs> I'm gonna call it out to Rachel. So we got a third cup of avocado oil in each of these bags. You could also use olive oil. Yep, that totally works fine in this too. Yep. And then after that, back to our apple cider vinegar. Are you seeing a pattern here? <laughs> well, we like to reuse ingredients when we can. Yes. It makes sense for you. It, it makes does. sense you know, efficiency wise and budget wise. And it's tasty. And apple cider vinegar is, really adds a lot of flavor. It does. We use it in a lot of our salad dressings too. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot to have that. And this one, we've talked about these bacon wraps though, but truly, I mean, I feel like we say this a lot. This is my family's favorite. <laughs> but I really have been making this for years for my family. And I really like too, like when they were little, I could break it into, Rachel, you're going to do two teaspoons of parsley. Okay. Um, I would like not make it a whole wrap. I'd just give them like the little pieces of it. Yeah. So you break the little bacon in little pieces. Deconstructed. There you go. There's like, the one I'm looking for. Yes. There you go. Deconstructed Southwest yes. bacon wrap. And honestly, still for my five-year-old who's super picky, I still probably have to do that. 
Pissies. So this dried parsley, it adds color mainly as a little flavor. Now could you use fresh parsley if you have it? Sure. Actually, I think the original recipe I used yeah. fresh parsley. I feel like um, you're never going to go wrong with something fresh. Shoot, did I do one? You did one. Two? Thank you. I just saw you do one. Okay. <laughs> See, don't you wish you had a poly? <laughs> Everybody needs a poly. Everyone needs someone to watch over their shoulder when they're cooking. No, right? Two. Okay. See, we have each other to jabber, but you've got kids around probably right now. Yeah, so. or whatever. You're yeah. feeling busy at you. Okay. This was chili powder. We said that. Yes. Um, yeah, this adds a smokiness to it, a little southwest okay. flavor. Garlic powder is next. Two teaspoons of that. We are not shy with the seasoning <laughs> with our chicken. Chicken needs a lot of seasoning. It does. It's pretty bland. Well, this is going to be wrapped up in a tortilla with some cheese and other things too. So we want that that marinade to shine. So this is dried oregano. Okay. Again, you could probably use fresh if you have it. One of the things we sometimes tell you to do is you can crush it in hand. Um, by doing this, you release the oils in your dried herbs. You can even smell it more. <laughs> it really does add more flavor when you do that. So if you ever see crush in hand on one of our recipes or another recipe, now you know what that means. Yep. Plus it's kind of fun. Then cumin. 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 I don't know. I say cumin, but you say coupon and I say coupon. Oh, that's even nice. point. Yeah. I say coupon? Yeah, I do. You, you say, say coupon. 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 I'm gonna have to look okay. up what's the <laughs> depends on where you're from. I'm like a is there a right way? I'm an English uh, education true. major from you back kind of in the day. Win by default. No, I don't win. I just find it interesting. I life. was a communications major, so oh, you know, coupon you it is. Okay. Uh, one teaspoon of salt in each of these, and then we're gonna do a half teaspoon black pepper, and then we're going to roll it around mm -hmm. and. These won't go in the freezer quite yet either because we're going to make them part of the kit yep. as well. So anyway, that is step six. Guys, we're almost there. We are squishing. Hey, guys, we're back, and we are on step seven. Mm -hmm. So we are prepping all that delicious bacon you just made. And so what you're going to do is set it on. We've already done this. We've drained it on some paper towels. So mm -hmm. get rid of some of that grease. And Polly's going to take the first batch and cut it in half. Or break it and break them in it's half. It's crispy enough, line. break it in half. Yeah. yeah. But. And so you you either have some smaller bags that we told you to get, or you can use mm -hmm. foil. But the point is, this is going to go, you're preparing these for your, <laughs> stop it. I'm all right. <laughs> you have to do that. It's like law. Um, these are going to be prepared for your gourmet chicken sandwiches. It's going to be part of the kit. So mm. squeeze all the air out. Yep. And we're going to come back to those in a okay. moment. There's those. Now. That was fast. I know. The second batch, you're going to actually chop these up into little bite-sized pieces, smaller pieces. And they're going to go in two more bags. If I can do this right. <laughs> yeah. And then she's just rocking her chef's knife, sharp chef's knife. Mm -hmm. Now, um, one tip with knives is uh, when you're cutting something big like this, keep that tip down just to mm -hmm. kind of ground it. Especially yeah. my hand's even like a little greasy from that bacon, so yeah. just be really careful. Also, spider fingers. So that's another little cutting Do tip. Do not chop your fingers off. Yes, that would be a tip. No finger tips. Um, I'm hoping your videographer puts that as the tip. Like, uh, um, do not chop your fingers off. <laughs> do it. Um, okay, I mean, don't do it. Don't yeah. chop your fingers off. Yeah. Okay, so she's chopping those up, and we're going to divide those in half. And just gonna have to eyeball this one. Yeah. There we go. Put half. I could probably even chop yeah, a little smaller I would. than that. Well, I'm on camera, okay? I was gonna make it go fast. Just perfectly. Okay. Okay. Just trying to go but fast here. The idea is you're gonna sprinkle a little uh, bacon onto each one of your wraps. A little bacon goes a long way. It does. Now I'll say this cutting board's a little unsturdy. <laughs> like when I got going, I was like, mm, I probably should have picked a more sturdy one. It's yeah. starting to work a little bit. So, um. Well, in retrospect, I should put like a rag under this just to stabilize it a little bit more because you don't want to be cutting on something that's like sliding around. Yeah. But anyway, let's pretend that's like really chopped. <laughs> all right. So there you go. That is step seven. So get your bacon all ready to go. Set it aside. And we're going to come back and we're going to put together our meal kits and finish this one hour prep session up. Yep. You might be wondering what to do with all of that bacon grease. So there's a couple options. I actually save mine. Not all of it, but I usually keep a jar in my fridge and I use it for cooking. As a face cream? Yes. I mean, it's really good <laughs> for your skin. Uh, no, I use it like when frying eggs or anything that's just better with bacon grease. Oh, yeah. Everything's it's better It's great to cook grease. with. So if you just have like a mason jar or something, I just keep some in the fridge. So that's one option. Um, what not to do is to dump it down your, your yeah. garbage disposal. It's bad for your pipes. It's bad for your pipes. Mm -hmm. It'll clog it up. So... Um, if you, um, a lot of times I just put paper towels on the bacon grease and then I wrap it up and throw it away that way. Yeah. So it'll soak it Don't up. you also put it in your dog's food? Oh, yes. <laughs> so I was telling Rachel that. So my dog 
Cheddars are old. Their teeth are little, oh. poor teeth. Um, so we soften their food with stuff. So when I make bacon, they know they're getting like bacon infused dog food. Amazing. <laughs> These dogs are never gonna. They're never gonna pass they on are. to the next life because they've gotten too good here. All right, we are now at step eight, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a couple of. Uh, gourmet chicken meal kit. Yep. So you probably have a bunch of these lying around. If not, that's okay. Grab something that you can stick your meal in. So I'm going to take my gourmet chicken sandwich, uh, gourmet chicken marinade and mm -hmm. chicken. I'm going to put some bacon in there because you got to have some bacon. Um, I divided up a package of cheese into like two packages. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm not, I didn't, there's, no, no, reason, reason, yeah. there's no reason to get another bag out. I'm right. going to freeze it in this. Yep. So in goes some cheese for that one. Yep. And then we need some buns. Where are the buns? Right here. Okay. Whole wheat buns, a little healthier. Throw those in. Yep. You can freeze that whole darn thing. Yeah. Just like this. Let's do one more. And you can freeze the buns in these. They'll be okay. Yeah. So. Very well. All right. Chicken. Bacon. Cheese. cheese. Bacon. When you serve these, you'll probably want all your favorite toppings, like tomatoes and yeah. lettuce and mayo, barbecue sauce. I like barbecue sauce. Having these this week. I'm not even freezing mine. I know. <laughs> Throw these on the grill, baby. It's spring here right now. Yep. All right. You're done with step eight, and we're on to our last step. Yay! We are on step nine, your final step to make the chicken and bacon wraps. I have a bag of cheese here, and since this is two cups, it says on the front, I'm just going to divide it evenly between two Ziploc bags here. Or actually, Rachel, I'm not even just going to just cut half in this it. one yeah. and then just freeze this yep. rather than waste another baggie. Exactly. Yep. Now, there are reusable bags that are online that you can find. I've used them for sure. Um, we just aren't using them in the prep sessions for the sake of time. But um, you can find reusable bags. Um, they're called stasher bags. There's also some other off-brand ones. So mm -hmm. they're on Amazon. If you don't want to use all these bags, there's definitely options. Or you can use containers. You can use Tupperware yeah. containers. Use little there's lots of reusable containers. options. Yep. All right. Let's make our kits. Let's make our kits. Okay. This is so super easy. Here we go. Southwest chicken yep. in tortillas. Mm -hmm. Easy to freeze. Yep. They throw those well. in. Yep. Cheese. Bacon. Boom. Done. You're going to make, for this recipe, while you make that other one, you will need to make a Southwest ranch sauce. Mm -hmm. It's super easy. We give you the recipe on the freezer label as well as <coughs> it. Oh! I did Your turn! <laughs> the pepper's not even out. No. What was it? I don't know. It's spring here. I'm having allergies. <laughs> all kinds it's the of flowers stuff. outside. Right. Um, so you'll want to make that sauce fresh and then serve it with these and it's delicious. Don't skip on the sauce. That no. sauce is like what makes it yummy. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, you're done with all the steps. Hey, congratulations. You just made six meals in one hour. Such a good use of your time. Totally. So guys, we hope you join us for more prep sessions in the future. We had a lot of fun. We hope you had fun too. Remember, you can find all this information at onehourfreezerprep.com. And we hope you join us in the next video. See you later. Bye guys.